Do we? Yeah. Okay. So the sticker. Oh, yeah, I sticker. avoided the sticker. That'd be they pretty funny if a police one. officer gets a <laughs> ticket, that's right? Nice. Out of the meter. Oh, because I voted yesterday. That'd be kind of funny. Oh, that's it. I said, I said that'd be pretty funny if a police officer's car gets a ticket by another police officer. That'd be awesome. That'd be that'd be funny. You know? I don't think that would happen. I've seen it happen. The officer's name's on the bottom. I think payback would be a funny. Really? I, 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 I saw it happen in Chicago. We're running down the street trying to stop putting Yeah, he was pissed. <laughs> so I don't think I, we have introductions, but I think. We all like know each other because it's a small group. Hi, everyone. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Um, Do you guys have to sit over there for some reason? I don't know. No. Oh. No. Do you want to come over here? Do you want me to come over there? Sure. We should probably. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, we should introduce ourselves. However, I'm not good a point. Of the panel officially. For Maybe the camera. I'll sit next to it. Because, because yeah. we're not the only people here. Why don't we start with Major Jonas? Okay. Hi, I'm Major Jonas. Hello, oh, sir. <laughs> I'm looking there? Yeah. You're, you're, okay. Well, I'm Ingrid Jonas of State Police. <laughs> I'm David Chair with the Attorney General's Office. Don Stevens, uh, Abenaki Tribe. James Pepper, Department of State's Attorneys and Chairs. Chloe White, ACLU of Vermont. Eitan Nasred and Longo Chair. Lisa Menard, Department of Corrections. Rick Gauthier, Criminal Justice Training Council. Monica Weber, Department of Corrections. And Gary Scott, State Police. That was easy. Um, minutes. Oh. Did everyone have a chance? Yeah. I sent them out like I, kind of compulsively. I'm sorry. Um, well, James took a long time to get them done. So. <laughs> thank you. By the way. Yes, we really do have to say a real th yeah. thank you. The you want to do it again? Totally yeah. too comprehensive, but uh, I think I, there's an important topic. Yeah. yeah. No, I don't ask. Just a like personally yeah. love them. Yeah. I had one cl clarification though on page. Um, oops, it's in the dialogue when we were asking questions of Karen Richards from the Human Rights Commission. And I was synopsized as saying that the SP will often submit our investigation results to the Human Rights Commission. And I don't think I said that because we don't do that. Yeah. So just for clarification. So we need to amend that. Okay. Um, Okay, where can, so, can you tell me where we are? Page five. Okay. The fourth paragraph versus I Jonas. Yes. The last sentence is not uh, didn't isn't accurate information. Can that just be struck? Yes. And that would be and that would be yes. fine. So we can just do that. Yep. Great. Let's do it. Okay. I'll make a motion to do that. Okay. Does that have to happen? Yep. Okay. Second it. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? All abstaining? We're striking that sentence. And then, otherwise, any other addenda? Anything else that somebody might have to say about the minutes? Because we're going to post these now. So I just want to make sure that they're actually, people feel that they accurately represent what went on at the meeting. Um, I've already gotten guff that they weren't posted, you know, five minutes after we were done. Oh. So, um, well, I. I didn't feel, that doesn't feel comfortable to me. I mean, we have to approve the minutes. We yeah. can't just sort of put them off, you know, I mean, yeah, before yeah. we've decided. Yeah. So, anything else? No? Anyone want to move that we just approve them? Move to approve. Great. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? And there are no abstentions? All officially abstained, so it wasn't. Okay, you can abstain. Grand, it passes. <clears throat> Minutes are approved, and that so David, we need to 
I know. So we have to strike that one sentence. We have to and strike post. and then yeah. post them online. Are you? I have that motion noted, but James obviously has the actual oh. document. Um, or I'm send it to you. that would be. I have. You have the. I have document. them. You sent them to me. So I'll strike it. Okay. Sounds and great. then I'll send it to you. Okay. And then you can, with, you know, the love of God and so on, there won't be another internet crisis. And we will actually. <laughs> Don't pick on squirrels. Um, so. Um, oh, I'm going to chew the word. <laughs> Did you send an email with the minutes to the panel? I did. I think yeah. I might not have been on that distribution. We you can, weren't? We can check that later. But oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. really terribly sorry. I thought it's probably my fault. I, I got it. You were not on them, David. OK. Oh, um, it. It. it wasn't personal. I didn't think so. OK. <laughs> it was because Julio was here. That's right. And uh, so you were, you were just. Just forgotten about. I forget. Yeah. Forgotten about. <laughs> so I yes, I will. I'll, I'll strike so, it. And I will send it to you, you, and we'll yeah, figure sure. out the okay. list again because okay. obviously <laughs> my brain is. Um, announcements. We sort of had started with that just uh, informally. You're out of the office. What? What was? Okay. <laughs> talked about. Who's not here? We've already done that. Um, we let's see. Rebecca Turner is also not able to make it this evening. She had childcare problems. She was hoping to send someone in her place, but it was fairly last minute, so not certain that that can happen. Sheila Linton is on vacation. Said to me, "I may call in. Don't bet on it." Um, <laughs> I'm not betting on it. Uh, <laughs> so that's that's the other um, another announcement. I wrote as many of them down. It's hard when they come in at the last minute. You know, you get it. You get an email at like two o'clock in the afternoon, and you're driving, um, and you can't look at your hand device. So I didn't. Um, I think that's it. The other thing I want to say, and this is slightly, this may be a little awkward, I, there was, and you may all know this, there was an open letter that was sent to me um, by the former chair and vice chair of this panel. There was a, an open letter um, that was the subject of which was the report, which the panel, you will recall, at a meeting, what, three meetings ago, uh, voted to withdraw. I wrote the letter that was asked of me to Tim Ash and Mitzi Johnson, um, formally withdrawing the report. The open letter was angry about this. Um, I responded. I did not respond as an open letter because, frankly, I just felt like we voted on this, we have already dealt with it, and I didn't feel like I wanted it to just become broad again. Um, so I responded. What I'm telling you this for is to let you know that if anyone wants to see it in terms of transparency, please email me. Don't just tell me right now because like I'm like already worried about staying awake driving back to Putney tonight. So if you tell me right now, I will not remember. But if you email me, I will be more than happy to forward both the open letter and my response to it to you. Are there does anyone have any questions about that? I just felt like I needed to bring that up. I did not want to spend a whole lot of time on that. Um, we have such little time as it is that I didn't feel like it was something that I wanted to make a real agenda item for. Um, okay, so that you should know that, though, that that's what that's uh, what went on. Um, this was probably 
I don't know, what was it, a month ago at this point? Probably, yeah, about a month ago that this happened. So, um, and I wrote immediately back. Um, ways forward, I wanted to spend a little time talking about that because that came up last time not quite at the end, but close to the end. And actually, you, Chief Don, had raised a really good point that's, that are, it's in the minutes. Um, you were concerned about whether we would submit a report on a rolling basis or whether we would wait until we had a complete document. I don't know if you remember saying that, but you, it was a good point. Yeah, the gist was more or less because we were working only on 6A. We, we didn't were. Know if we're going to do 6A, submit it, or wait till we're done with whatever we're going to do and then submit it. So that was the only question. Right. Just in case people didn't remember. And I think that that's a, a good conversation for us to have now. I'm sort of sorry there aren't more people here to have it, but I think. I don't think we really have time to, to wait for a, a larger group of people. Um, I asked at that moment that we have that discussion at a later date because I think it was like, I don't know, 20 of 8 or something like that and everybody was getting a little, you know, Karen gave such a marvelous presentation and everybody was just kind of drooling quietly and I think that we needed to go home. So I said, can we do this later? So let's do it now. Um, I, I want to just put forth some stuff. I am not, I want to start off by saying, this is a suggestion I'm making. I am facilitating. I am not a dictator. I am just the chair. I am just putting forth an idea about how we might go forward here. And I'm hoping other people will have other ideas or people will look at me and go, Eitan, that's absolutely ridiculous. Um, stop talking. Um, but I just wanted to put this forth as a suggestion. My sense is that we can make notes about anything at all on this. Include, I mean, we started with 6A because we decided, I believe it was um, Judge Grierson who actually said, why don't we just go with the way the statute's written and start with 6A. 6A. Um, my sense is that we can make notes about anything at all on this, but not submit it until the, to the legislature until it's a complete document and everyone's happy with it, or as I said last time, equally miserable <laughs> um, with it. And I, I'm, I'm frankly more comfortable with everybody being equally miserable. Um, there is again no need to rush, as we discussed at our meeting in June, when several people pointed out that the legislature was not imminently expecting anything from us, and that gives us actually some leeway. Has anyone heard anything that contradicts that? I actually spent some time looking at that and didn't find anything that said that you know we had something to produce by January 1st or anything of that nature. In fact, it's biennial. So we've got even more time than that. Not that we should bore ourselves necessarily, but <laughs> on the other hand, I don't think we need to, you know, stay up all night. Um, there's also, I would suggest, no need not to get going. Some of our best thoughts probably deserve to be captured, although I'm sure that we'll want to tinker with them. Um, so clearly what I'm doing is suggesting here that we write as we go. Um, I know that there's, that that had some problems before I was on the panel. Um, but I'm also thinking that, again, as I had just said, that there are some really interesting thoughts that people are probably going to have that really should be captured. I'm still focused on, I remember Judge Pearson saying last time, that one of, the, one of the things we might do is piggyback on, as it were, with what the Human Rights Commission is doing because they're already talking about needing more people. And we were also having a conversation where, I don't remember who, said how many racial um, complaints are there a year? And it was a handful. 
Um, and everybody got very quiet. I think we were all kind of a little like, oh, now what? What do we do? Um, and there were some people who didn't buy that also. However, there were some good thoughts there. I thought when he said that, why don't we start with that? And he said it in a very commonsensical way. It was really quite lovely. Um, I figure, why not? We can write that. We can start with that. So again, as I say, I suggest that we start writing as we go. The statute itself gives us a rough outline to follow. And it seems reasonable to follow that to me, at least for now. I mean, why not? It's there. Somebody did the work. Let's piggyback on it. Um, the important point is how this process should take place. Um, I'm certainly willing. I love to write. God, I love to write. I don't know why. I love write. I'm an academic. I can't help it. I love to write. And I'm thinking, if you, if you want that, I will write, and I will send it out, just the way that we just did with the minutes. I will write. I will send it out. And and by God, we need people to like go, Aton, this is dumb, or. I don't think Don actually said that. I think he said, because I'm not going to get it right. Um, so like a rolling draft. A rolling draft. Yes, exactly. A rolling draft, which I would be my suggestion about a way forward with this. Um, I have this in bold face here, because I think it's probably the most important point I wrote down with this. No one will be submitting anything without a vote, and further, without ample commentary long before a vote is taken. Let me repeat that, because I think it bears repeating. No one will be submitting anything without a vote, and further, without ample commentary long before a vote is taken. All right? It's not going anywhere, except in this room, and in your email files to put in your spam folder or whatever makes you happy. Um, the other matter to bear in mind is that writing has not been graven in stone for rather a while now in history, and that nothing that is written is immune to change. Um, it just allows us to preserve some of our best thinking, and I just think that that's worth doing. I think it's efficient. And I'm all for being efficient. Um, and that seems to me to be worthwhile. Anyway, that's what I wanted to say in terms of way forward, and then just open it up to a broader discussion about how people feel about that or anything else that may come to mind about ways forward. Uh, I'll put in my two cents. I think that. Um Having a living document that's ongoing, like you said, a rolling draft, living document, whatever, is, is a smart way to go. But I think you also have to look at, <clears throat> you can either wait forever, or you could do something for two years, and, you know, all of a sudden, it, two years is a long time, right? So I think wherever it makes logical sense to submit something, like if you're going to submit something to a legislative body, they're going to want something complete because they don't want to keep going back to the till. They mm -hmm. want to do it one time, fix it, move on to the next. Mm -hmm. So I think if we're going to them for something, I think we should make sure we have everything that we want them to be able to uh, address at one time, just mm -hmm. for testimony, for all kinds of things. I think if it's a policy within the juvenile justice system or the Vermont State Police or corrections or something, I think that could be a rolling thing as something is accomplished, I think maybe we could then see how to roll that policy change out or, or how it fits in like with this new panel for sy systemic racism and, mm -hmm. and the new uh, executive director and what they're working on, what we're working on, and how we can take the information given to us by the Human Rights Commission and kind of hone that so we, we have the information. So I think it doesn't have to be an either or. I think it can okay. be as it makes logical sense to to move forward on a policy or legislation or something. I think we can do that mm -hmm. and still continue to work on it, and then they can tweak it if we need to. I don't know. That's my sense. Great. Uh, but that's just my opinion. Good. 
Do we want to have a timeline maybe to sort of? That might not be a bad idea because Lord knows I, I can sit with on. this for years. <laughs> That's the point, right? After right. years, yeah. somebody might get no, this interested in what we're doing as a panel. Right. You yeah. know, and nothing's come out of there in two right. years, so what, what are they doing? Why are they doing anything? David, we are required to produce something by January of 2020, correct? Because the first document was due on in January 2018. I think that's right, yeah. January 15th, 2018. And then by But on the flip side, by withdrawing it, is there that's any ramifications to that? Question. Because yeah. technically, I they submitted some, but it was withdrawn. So technically, they didn't get anything. So is, is there a legal deadline we've already missed? Or, or yes. I don't know. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's where these guys yeah, come right. in. I mean, yeah, we missed the deadline, but it's not like at this point, you We're know, not gonna the next spanked. deadline is the only ne definite next deadline is the 2020 deadline. Okay. And I think it's up to us to decide how to handle the, the path forward until then. Okay. I think we have flexibility. Okay. That still seems like a long time from now, or maybe it. Oh, I'm not suggesting. No, 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 I know. I'm just, just, I'm sorry. I, yeah, just thinking out loud. I think from a legislative standpoint, that's not a long time because, I mean, when you start, they start in January, end in April. I mean, then they're done till the next year. That's true. I mean, they're, I mean, and that's true. This, this panel for the, the uh, racial, systemic racial uh, panel is being picked as, as we speak. Yes. Right? I mean, the the applications have already been required to be submitted, so they're going to Certainly be reviewing not. those. They're going to, I mean, the governor's going to appoint those, or somebody's going to appoint the uh, people on the panel, and then they have to get the executive director. So I think it does it. It, it makes logical sense if we're doing something legislatively to wait till that person gets in and see how this panel shakes out in our comparison to what we're doing. So we're not overlapping. So I don't think 2020 is unreasonable from a legislative standpoint. No, I guess maybe, from, maybe from, from a policy, depends. but huh? A lot of it depends on what they plan on doing with the report. Yeah, I mean, we, might, we might be looking at a deadline of 2020, but they want stuff by November of 2019 so they can begin crafting legislation. Right. Yep. So November of 2019, a, a year year. from now. Yep. Yeah. Right. That way they can get stuff rolling into the 2020 legislative session. Should we say that for our timeline? Yeah. I mean, it's, a, it's at, least meetings, at least 12 I meetings. At least 12 meetings. Timeline for filing. Yes. Obviously, we would need to start the process for yeah. vetting it here significantly before that. God, I hope so. Right. <laughs> <laughs> your bold language. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but. November 2019, then. This is all going so easily. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, no, I am. I'm just checking because everybody's like, we're all like agreeing and everything just feels easy. And I'm like yeah. having a we moment. Have folks introduce, we all, I think we might be live. Oh. So just introducing yourselves to folks who came late. Sure. Um, I'm, I'm sorry. Jessica Brown. I am one of the Attorney General appointments, um, and I work at, for the Defender Guns. I was the other late one. <laughs> Sorry, right. I didn't mean to call out. That's okay. Yeah. Brian Grierson, the Chief Superior uh, Judge. Good evening. So I was just going to pick up on this idea. I obviously came in late. Um, this idea of a rolling report and starting with draft. Yes, but I, I think what we need to keep in mind is that even though it's a draft, when we've finished an area, we more or less want it finished, we don't want to right. come back. That's the only risk mm -hmm. in the report. There's a tendency yes. six months down the road, let's go back and reconsider. So I just think we need to keep that in mind. As, yes. As we want. Okay. Do we need to take a vote on November 19, 2019? Or do we? No. I think we use 
It's a target date. I think date. we're there. It's a target date. Yeah. It's a target date. Okay. That was easy. Um, as I say, and if anybody who... I'm willing to write, but I enjoy it. I don't know why. Some people the judge was the last one here, so maybe he could write. <laughs> I don't know who invites him, <laughs> but he's really troubled. He gave me a seat, now I know why. Yeah, but I don't think anyone is going to argue with you for okay. offering. That's I, my really, guess. I really am yes, offering yeah. because Please do. I, 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 Please. It's like cooking. To, for some people, like to cook. I'd rather die. Um, and I, I'm that's extreme. Right? I mean, Pardon? It's extreme. I know it I is extreme, but I cook. <laughs> Ugh, kitchen, bad. No, but writing, I love. So I will. I'm more than willing to do it once we get some stuff down, and I will start oh. scribbling things out, and it will look. Beautiful. No, probably not initially, <laughs> but you know, we'll we'll work on it and get it to that point. Um, okay, great. That is great. So, I just want to make sure I'm clear. Are we starting with tackling 6A? Yes. Okay, what I thought. Um, because we are now moving ahead mm -hmm. <laughs> to our next moment on the agenda, which is, in fact, the discussion. Because I had, we after Karen Richards spoke, we were all, I, that was wonderful. We were all like, <laughs> Uh, I mean, it was just, it was so marvelously full. And everybody had, she had such wonderful ideas. And we, you know, and it was kind of like, okay, now we need to like make something out of this. And nobody knew what to do at that point except go home. It was great. But, but then we were going to spend this meeting actually coming up with some real ideas based on what she said. Judge Grierson had that. I keep going back to him because you had that idea about, um, oh, you're looking at me like I did not have an idea. <laughs> you, had this, you had this really great idea about, because she had said they were looking at getting more people to deal with some of the, like, particularly racial stuff, but even though there isn't there wasn't a huge call for it. There were like a handful of cases, but they still needed those extra people. And you were saying maybe we could piggyback onto that rather than come up with something that's radically new and different. Mr. Chair, piggyback onto their process. Right. Yeah. I made some. I made some notes because you asked us to yes. look at that. Do Great. you mind if I hand them out? To I them? would love it. So we can kind of look at them and just at least because I, I figured. This gives uh, some starting point. It I does. I can turn it around if you want. Mm -hmm. you I'll, I'll pass this over. Yeah, I'm okay. going to pass it around. Right. That's right. If you don't, yeah. if you don't want. We can share. Yeah, we can share. We can share. That's okay. I got a bunch. Oh, you're doing all right. Let's get a bunch. Oh, right. All right. So unless there's more than 15 people, if there are, then I'm in trouble. They're coming. There you are. It's just to start at least a conversation anyway. Okay. Wow, you took really good notes. Um, well, it's based on the minutes, too. I mean, yeah. so. I just, huh? <laughs> well, no, I just figured it's a starting point to see. Because you wanted to work on how this fit, how she fit into 6A, or how that right. fit into 6A. So I tried to uh, take the minutes and their conversation and, mm -hmm. and mold it into what we could do to help it fit into 6A based on our discussion. Well, just to keep everybody current in the um, section, that talks about parties involved in handling current complaints starting in July 1, the council. Is handling law enforcement regulations, so complaints will go there from a certification perspective as well as wherever they may go okay. elsewhere in the system. Great. Thank you. So, 
I didn't know if you wanted to start with discussing and then build something on this, or you guys have some other outline, or other people have other things they want to start? Or I'm still reading. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, number two is interesting. I had um, Ann Schroeder. I don't know if you all remember her. She's a, She was here, a member of the public, last time. Mm -hmm. And she wrote me an email uh, last week saying, wouldn't it be nice if a lot of the social justice organizations had links on their websites? And she did the research. I, I, it was great. She like went and she's like, there are no links to um, the Human Rights Commission. And wouldn't it be nice to have those links put in so that people can have a, a far more direct access to, to what's going on? And she asked me if, what she should do. And I said, I think you should talk to those people. Um, but just so you know. But that, that came up around your second point here in your recommendation. Well, and also the HRC said they need to do better outreach and marketing as well. Right. So it kind of fits into that whole piece. Right. <clears throat> they just don't have staff to do it. Right. Which moves into three. To three, right. Yeah. Because when they said investigators, the reason why I put one to two is because they said they normally handle 16 per investigator. They know We know for sure she said 10 cases per year were related to racial discrimination complaints. Right. And they, she did say we know that one to two cases per year were related to racial profiling. Profile. So that's 12. Right. But under the work discrimination, there was no indication of if it was race-based or if it was just in general with work discrimination. So... <laughs> You, can, you yes. can easily either get the 16 right there, so you can justify to a legislative body one position for that, or there's also housing complaints, which there wasn't identified as if it was racial or not. So I'm not sure how this is encompassing, but I mean, you could, with the data she gave us, you could justify a recommendation for at least one, mm -hmm. if not maybe two investigators to handle racial caseloads. We could ask her about so, that and ask her to yeah. clarify. I mean, that would be easy to do yeah. if that would. So, I mean, that's where I came up with the, uh, and then I figured they don't have anybody for education and outreach or training, which they said they desperately right. need, which would help maybe funnel people to the HRC. And then with it, I think the, what they're lacking, in my opinion, from the discussion was the caseload coordination and mediation. Because I think because there's so many agencies that can receive complaints, I think you need to funnel them all to one agency and then have them keep track of it and then farm it out to the proper people so you can follow up on it and then see what the results are. So it's like a project manager for cases coming in because there's all of these, the attorney general says they get certain ones that, and then the human rights get certain one and then if they don't take it, it goes to EEOC or HUD or, so I, I think there needs to be, or the, the state police, because you said you handle your own. So I think there needs to be because she said that they had very good data collection. It's just a matter of putting the data in a usable format. Mm -hmm. So I think if they already have the ability to handle legal issues and mediate, they already have the ability to have the database already there with proper capturing of data, what they need is management, like, like, Facilitate do somebody that, yeah. doing the project management to say, and then if it needs mediation, maybe that person could help do that. Mm -hmm. And then further on down where it says the data collection, as an oversight, um, maybe the, the data that's collected could then be given to the new panel on racial uh, disparities to not only oversee the HRC's handling of what they're doing, but also gives them an avenue to deal with the non-legal issues of how to change where they're coming from. So if they're all coming from one department, they can start focusing education in that department where 
because I think what HRC and AG's office said they only handle the legal aspect. The right. other stuff isn't. So that's where the, sy the systemic racism panel can help pull the load. I don't know. That's just just suggestion. No, it's great. Thank uh, you. Just, just a suggestion. So you're sort of envisioning one spot shop. Yeah, that sort you of have pops to. in and then that drops out to these various silos of agencies and then they can either stay in that silo. Well, that's what like 6A is telling us. Oh, uh, a, 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 if you look at 6A, 6A says that it is a common uh, reporting, uh, where is it? How to institute a public complaint about how to, right, how to, how to, yeah. To address perceived implicit bias across all systems of state government. Right, so you kind of want to funnel that into one area so somebody can keep track of it because if people are saying, oh, no, that's, we have more complaints than that, but nobody's capturing that, or, so you have to have one focal point as a funnel in and then feed out, but then you get feedback back in saying, okay, what's the status of this? What'd you do? It might be just as simple as saying, we're still working on it, or oh, we've closed that, or mm -hmm. we referred that back to HR. So, you, so that HRC can, because there's some. I think there's a, a responsibility of HRC to work with a human uh, resources department within the state, because they're handling all employee issues. Mm -hmm. So, they have to be involved because there's a legal reason for the HR departments, or whether it be a state police, or whether it be with the state agency, HRC isn't just going to do their own thing. HR has to be involved because they're an employee. So I think there has to be some coordination between these different departments who are dealing with these complaints so they can, not, they can oversight each other. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So there's some check and balance there mm -hmm. and data collection because without data, we're right back where we started. It's going to be interesting to see how they... So anyway. The data collection happens, I think, because if I read that order properly, that position is going to be very heavily reliant upon the collection of data Which across one? the executive branch. Oh, you're talking about the new uh, the new branch. Yeah. So, I mean, this kind of fits in. With well, that's why I did it that way, because I figured that position is going to do like what the Vermont State Police is already doing. Right. They're going to create these, well, my, in my vision, they're going to create these panels that are going to do the work and dig into the details, and then they're going to report back and say, okay, what do we find, and how do they put the big picture together? Because you're working on BSP stuff, HRC is working on theirs, so how does this executive director along with that panel put it all together and say how do we how do we corral it or how do we manage it i'm i'm, I'm only as, assuming that because you got one person they can't right. deal with all the state government they just right. so they're going to have to build these coalitions right or panels like this one or right. you know in different departments to right. be able to do it i mean because um, otherwise they're just yeah no but i'm saying they're the data the analysts right i mean right. their point is saying where's the breakdown and how do we fix it right. whereas then you guys are getting into we're getting into the details of of collecting that data mm -hmm. but i i think you have to have hrc if we're going to have a focal point if you funnel everybody so they all get the same message any complaints for racial disparities goes to the human rights commission that's an easy thing to put out there and hammer any complaint dealing with racial issues go to the hrc HRC, HRC, and then once they start getting that message, that HRC is responsible to, like, oh, this deals with HUD. Right. Oh, this deals with VSP. Because otherwise, you're going to have VSP saying, oh, if you have any problems, we have a complaint officer, or we have uh, HR, or you got somebody else in correction saying, well, talk to your resource. And the school is going to say, talk to your guidance counselor. <laughs> I mean, so that's what we're having now, right? Everybody's reporting to everywhere. So, but HRC is only getting a piece of it, okay? Right? Yeah. And I, didn't we say that HRC made the logical sense to because they would have a process? They have the legal they authority are. already. Plus, but Major Jonas is looking. Well, at I'm, this. Just, I'm processing wrong? this as we talk, so I, I, I support. I get where you're hmm. looking for. I think that that would make sense. There are some issues. Just, just thinking about VSP with regard to our complaint process because. It is currently governed by state law that our internal affairs, mm -hmm. which is kind of outdated language for professional standards process for complaints, is confidential by statute. And 
only with permission from the Citizens Advisory Board that we have, which is called the State Police Advisory Commission, can we release information publicly about a, a complaint. So we have, the commission has given permission to release information about internal affairs complaints. We do, I mean, rarely, but, and we do give a report at any time about our numbers, our general numbers of types of complaints and outcomes, whether there were findings or not. But those are all just general numbers, they're not specifics. So it might be that somebody goes direct to the Internal Affairs Division and files a formal complaint, or they walk into a barracks and they make a complaint, and then there's a policy that every member who receives any complaint alleging a violation of one of our codes of conduct, which are broken into three parts based on severity, must report that up the chain of command. If you don't report receiving information about a complaint, then that is a offense in and of itself. So the point is that there are certain things about VSP's current complaint process that are confidential by statute, um, and so we'd have to kind of work around some of those things, but I, but I get what you're getting at. That it's really mm. like a clearinghouse for yeah. Yeah. where complaints. I, I think we could have. I mean, to piggyback off that, and the same thing is that we have a system where there is an area where it comes in, but it may not always be caught there because it's caught at the agency. But at the end of the year, these agencies have to give finalized reports back into that clearinghouse. So, you know, this maybe this many numbers came in, but this is the actual numbers we took. Well, that's why this. Yeah, that's why. Right, right, that's right. why this is a good discussion because yeah. I mean, this isn't set in stone. It's right. just a suggestion, mm -hmm. a talking this point. Yes. Maybe right. VSP is excluded, or maybe oh, there's well, a no, no, or maybe there's a statistical data that can be funneled. Back up. So there's some track trackability right. to the data. I don't know. Well, <clears throat> Act 56 changed that landscape a little bit because the VSP are now required by law to report everything that every other agency has to report to the council. Um, there's still that confidentiality piece and you handle it their own, everybody handles their own first category B offenses. Um, it gets made as a report to us simply so we can track second subsequent offenses which come into the jurisdiction of the council at that point. Um, you know, the criminal investigations, VSPO is open, open air about that, um, which is our category A. Category B is the gross professional misconduct, uh, biased enforcement, um, you know, using your authority to gain personal advantage, that sort of stuff. And everybody takes care of their own first offenses. Part of the reason that was done was because the VSP have a pretty robust process, as do a number of others, who are handling those things appropriately. Uh, and on the second offenses, the VSP are typically letting people go at that point. Anyway, so the report still gets made to the council. And the category C, are the offenses against the council processes, which we handle. Like you lied about your training hours or failed to make a report that you're supposed to make or something like that. Those are council processes. So the current law states that we have to accept complaints regardless of the source. In addition to accepting reports, we have to accept complaints and then funnel it to the appropriate agency. Um, and that's not unusual. Four or five times a year, I get a call from people complaining about an office, they don't have stuff out. So we funnel it towards the appropriate agency, and then it's kind of circular. The report then comes back to the council. And Act 56 also requires us to maintain a registry. And all of our actions are taken in full view of the public. We do the registry. The information on the registry depends on the action taken by the council. But that's all public, and whoever this executive director is, just go and look at this and gather all the information you like off of that, or we could just aggregate it, send it up, but it's all public. Anybody on the planet can pull up our website and get a look at it. Well, I guess my question is, is that we're not talking so much about the internal departments feeding the HRC. That's not where I was going. Because most of the complaints are either going to come from the public, like if there's racial profiling, they might not want to go to the Vermont State Police because that's the people they're complaining about. They might want to go to HRC. And then HRC would then funnel it down to v VSP to then look into the what happened, right? And then you could follow your processes. If it's within state government, I don't know if they would come to the department or the where they're working 
or if they would go to HRC. I'm just saying what happens now if the HRC gets a complaint about whatever in, in this thing that you're talking about, they're pushing it to you, maybe, right? Or maybe not, I don't know. So they've already given that I'm making a complaint because I feel comfortable doing so. Now somebody else knows that I'm making a complaint outside of the ones I'm complaining about. <laughs> Uh, and then it goes through that process within that department, right? So it would be like the parallel process, right. or whatever, HRC. whatever. Yeah. yeah, but somebody's keeping track that there's like actually a the complaint made. Just like HUD, if somebody's complaining about their housing, would they go to the housing unit? Maybe. If they do, that's a different process. But if they at least come to the centralized one, they then push it to HUD and say, investigate it, get back to me. And with not maybe not with specifics, but what, what was your number, finding? I mean, there's a number of ways know. that complaints present themselves in a way. Like, mm -hmm. right, so someone might not feel comfortable going to VSP right. and making a complaint. However, they are challenging the search of their vehicle. And through that motion to dismiss, they made statements to show that they are concerned that there was unconstitutional policing that was happening that involved racial profiling or uh, unlawful search. And then when we learn of that type of thing, then that could constitute opening an internal investigation. But so complaints sort of present themselves in different ways. It's not always formal. Some people don't always, people don't always feel comfortable making a formal complaint, and yet the basis of a complaint comes, surfaces through other means. I'm channeling Sheila. And yeah, that could be that agency reporting back, I guess. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm wonder. I, I just remember last time she, she seemed. And there's no way to know this. I, I, I really, but she seemed to be uncomfortable with the notion that someone who would be a, that the complainant would actually feel comfortable complaining. And that, in fact, the numbers that we were given, that Karen gave us, were, were low. That she seemed to feel that there were a lot more people. Right. It was yeah. far underreported. I would think that in this process, if you remember we talked about number 6A, how to institute a public complaint. I think the other piece was how to educate the public mm -hmm. right. as to how to make a complaint. So right. I think by this process, if it works, I it think should. There should be more. Right. Should be more complaints. Of course, right. Sheila's instincts are saying, and perhaps all of us are saying the same thing. The nature of Good. this kind of complaint. Right. Uh, but I think the major is correct too. I mean, yeah. complaint is a very broad term, and it's going to come in different ways. That some aspect of it may start out in the, in the public, right. in, in the media, and end up. Their process or any other agency's internal process. So right. I, they could take a path that is public in one sense, but internal and more specific. Well, in a yeah. Way. Yeah. yeah, that's why I was saying, according to 6A, it says institute a public complaint process. So, so I'm I, I'm just saying there's gonna like you were all saying is there's multiple ways people can complain. Somebody might just want to go to their supervisor and say, Hey, Joe's giving me a problem. Can we take care of it? Or just don't make a big deal about it, but can we, you know, that doesn't need to rise to, you know, okay, no, you got to go through HRC. No, I mean, that's, I think if we provide an avenue for the public to be able to, to be able to make a formal complaint, that's what our job here, not that we're circumventing any other processes that other departments have. I'm just saying is we have to provide a via, a common vehicle for someone and market that, like if you want, this is available. You don't have to use it, but this is available. I think that's where we're trying to strive, right? I mean, mm -hmm. it don't have to be set in stone, I think, because everybody's going to deal with their issues. But there has to be some accountability, because I'm thinking if you're going to legislators, they're going to want to know what are you going to do, right? How are you going to track it? How are you going to remediate it? And how much is it going to cost? And how much is it going to cost? So, I, I think. You know that's that's kind of what we got to present them with. Mm -hmm. I think the marketing is 
going to be something that's really difficult. I know that right now, I think Karen is the only one who really goes around the state and does a lot of the implicit bias trainings and things like that. So people, you know, and I think she said she has, she's two investigators. So I think, you know, both, you know, talking about the positions needed at HRC and then also the marketing is critical because, you know, uh, and a lot of this might come down to the appropriations that are given to HRC or mm -hmm. staff, but. If Karen's the only one who can go around, who goes around the state and does that, you know, uh, there's going to have to be some, some either mass marketing campaigns, more yeah. staff hired, uh, training the trainers, uh, sorts of meetings, because otherwise, um, you know, part of the problem with part of the reason why there might be underreporting is that people like me simply not know. Right. And I also see where this new panel. Racial systemic racial disparities panel and the executive director. That's part of their role, is making sure because part of it says cultural and other educational yes. opportunities to educate state departments on yeah. racial disparity issues. So I think there's going to be a, a overlap there or a hand in hand or something that's got to do with because um, there's funding to a point for that. I don't know how much. I know they. Allocated seventy five thousand, but I don't know if that's for the executive director position or overall stuff. I, I don't know. Huh? I, feel like it's gotta be for the I think position. it's for the position. The position. Well, but I'm, I don't know, but so I think there's going to be other training opportunities, but I just don't know how it relate. We don't know how it's going to relate to uh, human rights commission. So we're going on with your suggestion. I think. I mean, I'm just summing up now um, that we're, we're really going to go with we don't need to come up with a brand new another committee. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we need to give HRC the resources that they're going to need potentially right. to handle what we think is probably a bigger docket of cases for lack of a better phrase right. than what they're already or the other commission that's coming together to be funded to market and educate the public about the complaint system. Right. I mean, uh, big picture, I think that we are coming to a place where we are saying we want to use HRC as the place where all of these complaints, where people house. are educated that they can bring these complaints initially if they don't want to go directly to the agency that the complaint is, a, is about or against. And then, to me, it seems like it's a matter of them figuring out, okay, how is HRC going to handle these complaints? Is there going to be some funneling to the specific agencies to handle the, the complaints internally throughout through whatever their own system is? But it definitely seems like we have a sense that using HRC that way avoids having to create some whole new agency and gives us a framework to start with that already exists. Right, right. So so my question then, if I think we're all in agreement that potentially HRC is the mechanism, but do we just leave it at that and let them handle their own devices or do we provide them guidance like saying we need you to capture the data so we can report on it or we need to have, in other words, does every investigator handle uh, uh, racial issues, or do you have some people that have qualified backgrounds to be able to maybe help that area? Um, I, I don't know. Are, do we just give them a blank saying HRC is yours, or do we and we give you we recommend giving you the resources you need, or do we get down into a little more into the weeds and our recommendation to say, you know, this is what maybe you should do. I, I'm asking to the question. To piggyback on that, I was already sitting here thinking we're probably going to need to have Karen back at some point we to are. get into like, the yeah. details of. So if we use HRC as our major sort of clearinghouse, like, well, how would that work for you? You know, I'd assume you get fully staffed and whatever. How would you then handle these complaints if they involve a specific agency? Would you just do the investigation, or would you sometimes funnel? You know, would there be instances where it would be appropriate to funnel? to the agency, that sort of thing. So I think we're probably going to need to involve Karen in that further discussion. I think we would need to make sure that some of these statutorily right. defined processes yeah. we know, or like that, it's almost like a given, right? That these kinds of cases need to be referred out. 
to the statutorily defined. And I'm willing to bet she's still up with that. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. No, that's fine. The only reason why I'm asking the question about the details is because in her comments in the minutes, she said in an ideal world, right. yeah. I would need like right. six or eight. Right. So yeah. if you give her, like if we say we can justify based on racial profiling or racial issues alone, which is what we're dealing with, it might only deal with one, maybe two investigators, but she says I need six or eight. So my question is, would then she just then take her existing cases and put those, uh, now it relieves some of her workload from the other people, but there's no priority or any consideration given to the racial um, issue with, in which we're dealing with. I, I'm only, at, or it's not our issue. Uh, I don't know because, say you get, she needs six. We give her, we somehow get the legislature to give her two. Does that mean we're still a year out before any, because any cases with uh, racial disparities come up? That's where people were saying they get frustrated and they drop it and they don't want to deal with it because it just takes forever and they just get sick of it and say, forget it. Um, that was part of the discussion I think Sheila was bringing up was that people just get frustrated and say, forget it, it's not worth it. Right, and right. By then they find another reason to get rid of you. Well, but right? that may be, again, going back to, to marketing, that Maybe. this is how long mm -hmm. the process takes. I mean, you're not going to walk in the door and walk out the door the same day right. having your issue resolved. You can't possibly investigate something, I believe, wholeheartedly and fully. Right. So maybe it goes in part to that, to saying it's going to take this long. So right. that people know going in. Here's a quick question, if anyone remembers. How long is much longer is Karen in her position? Right. We're no. talking as if she's going to be available a long time. Right. Not, right. Oh, right. Not a right. long time. Right. That's a good point. Think about that. But and whoever comes in behind her is isn't going to that. have her knowledge base. Right, but you likely. also, we need her back. Not a, if you, it's, not if you it's not immediate, but I can't remember what you said. I thought she said November. Oh, but. did she? Oh, did she say that? But yeah, it's, it's not yeah. long, it's not far off. I mean, think about <laughs> how frequently we But also, right. if you yeah. read the minutes, right. mm -hmm. if you read the minutes from her testimony, she said if they have lack of resources, they yes. drop a lot of cases unless they are legally able to know they're going to have a case. Right. So there are a lot of things that just get dismissed because they don't have the resources. It's in the minutes. Yeah. So if they don't have the resources and we only give them two more, I don't know if we've solved the problem. I mean, we've helped, but I don't think we've solved what we're trying to do. That's, that's my only concern, um, unless they can be fully funded. Uh, anyway. Just a, I don't want to beat it to death, but I'm just trying to bring up little points from the testimony. So, so I guess I'm not the part where um, discussion. Karen said she was leaving in November. Is she going to green pastures or just the pasture? <laughs> she's just retired. Yeah. Yeah. So what I'm thinking is, if she's retired, we could just we could use her as a consultant. Yeah. And probably yes. More from her that way than yeah. having to express herself as the head of the Indeed. Human Rights Commission, and she might be more helpful to us in, in trying to decide what really needs to be done right. and rely on her expertise, right. um, even out of office. Should we start writing something and then give that to her? You said you were going to do that. I know that. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, <laughs> I said, when you okay. me. We <laughs> that was, there was a, what do you mean? Detail. Oh, okay. Should I? <laughs> Thank you, Major. <laughs> I'm so glad you made it this evening. Uh, <laughs> should, 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 should I start writing something down like that that we can actually put in front of her and say? Might start with, with that. that. See if no, we have expand on that as we we're presenting to her. No. Great. This is where we are in the process. What have we missed? What else should we be considering? Exactly. Okay. I love you. Thank you. Oh, I love you too. That was great. Oh, this is really wow. great. Let's have a hug moment. Yeah, I think it's the part of this too is we have to have, yeah, yeah. take a look at <laughs> state agencies. Personal space, right? Yeah. No. And do they Mine even have a formal complaint process yeah, in place? So okay. each agency <laughs> themselves, yeah. what is that? I think, because my understanding and kind of hearing about it is it sort of can go all over the place. It, there isn't a streamlined process. So. I think that's another part of this too, as we're sort of like having these agencies now have a more. You and I had a really good discussion about this. 
about data and about needing reports from different agencies. agencies in the executive branch and how they did this. We were going to ask him. And I didn't ask him. <laughs> uh -oh. I didn't ask you because you weren't here. But um, we had a discussion about this okay. that was a little ex parte, but you know. Um, about needing reports that would, in fact, talk about data collection around issues of complaints and so on and so forth and discrimination, et cetera. Um, and that we actually needed that as a group to look at, to get a sense of exactly mm. what, um, what Gary's bringing up. Okay. Is that something, are you, do you feel a little overwhelmed? I mean, I'm not sure my office like has that in one place, but given how many assistant AGs we have placed around state agencies right. over state government, I do think it's data that we could, over a period of some time, not data, but information about processes that we could gather. It may take at least several weeks to get that all together, but I Still. think we can do it. I, yeah. And I think we should ask the same, maybe Rick can have with local and sheriff's offices. What yes. All of the, like, do you have a formalized process? What it, or is it, so we can kind of hear, because I think the judge just made a good point, because that's kind of that, that what would, this document is sort of talking about. Well, so we the, look the at formalized it. process for complaints? Yeah. Yeah, yeah they do now because they're mandated by law. To, to come to you. Well, they have, they have to have an internal investigation policy that, mod, that we created as a model. So as we're a, talking about complaints, is everyone talking about complaints that might come from a citizen outside the agency as well as complaints by employees within the agency? Or clients. Well, so thank you for asking. Right. I was thinking the That's same thing. Point. I mean, I'm the inmates, the staff, mm -hmm. the public, right. 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 the law. Right. Yeah. And I think it's going to be scattered, so I think that's going to help sort of shape this overall image yeah. we're kind of looking at, because that yes. will help sort of define how these investigations sort of take shape, because there's going to be different standards when it comes to unions and this and that. And well, the statute that. says public complaint process, public. That's so that's true. That's what we have to concentrate on yes. is a public complaint process. Not, so not so much internal, internal okay. but because yeah. that that's, has okay. whatever that process is now. Yep. So it's more or less. Okay. So when I mean, we're talking about getting a sense of how all these different state agencies handle complaints, or if they have a formalized process. We're talking about complaints from members of the public about, so like for a public defender office, it would mean if I guess a client of ours thought that he or she was, was being discriminated in some way based on race or ethnicity, what the question is, what would their process be for bringing that to someone's attention and making a formal complaint. Well, I mean, that's that's why I'm reading the statute yeah, because that's no, why that's, really it's, that's why we have to not lose sight of if we're following the statute, we have to follow it. It's for the public. Now, could somebody in a department be part of the public? I don't. That's a different question, but we have to at least. Well, frankly, I mean, I think if we are if we are if we are educating the public more about how to make complaints, um, you know, based on allegations of discrimination based on race by a state agency, we are inevitably also giving that information to, you know, if there's an employee, if I feel like I'm being discriminated, you know, by my boss, like, I'm going to go to the HRC now. <laughs> um, so. I think from the criminal justice system, Staff. Yep. They could overhear something the state's attorney has said in, in right. talking to you. They could obviously be complaining about the judge uh, and the judge's reaction to something that they feel in the court process that you or the attorney may not have the same reaction. Uh, but the judicial process, of course, has okay. confidentiality. But Major Jonas's point earlier really made me think, you know, 
from my perspective, I think that when we see something, when we think that we see racial bias in a case, what you describe is exactly what we do. We usually address it by challenging it right. within the criminal case. Yeah. But this conversation is making me recognize, like I would never really even have thought about, yes, I can address this in the criminal case, but also there's this bigger issue mm -hmm. that maybe I should be taking mm -hmm. to the Human Rights Commission or some mm -hmm. broader, you know, making some more sort of formal mm -hmm. complaint, mm -hmm. not just in this criminal case specific to this, you know, this officer's conduct in this case, but really to his or her department or agency or whatever. And I think that's really what the goal of this is, is to see that bigger picture as well. You would almost be like, regardless of the merits of your claim in the court right. proceeding, yes. there's a broader yes. concept that needs to be reported beyond right. the uh, But then how would we capture that if somebody is um, has absolutely no interest whatsoever in bringing to, they don't have any faith in our department, let's say. They feel they were discriminated against and they really don't care about our process. They have no faith in our process. And so they hire an attorney and they sue our department, and which they're rightfully able to do. And then we're engaged in this thing that could go on for years and involves attorneys, um, and we um, would hopefully also open a parallel internal process for that, but if somebody has no interest whatsoever in a complaint, because they don't have any faith in the system working to, to answer their complaints, so they're going after it in a different way that's their prerogative to do, we'd still want to would we still want to capture those as complaints? Because they're technically. I would hope. Yeah. Well, that answers. Yeah, the, that she would. answered that because um, Karen had said that they often will uh, recommend or push things to either legal aid or uh, legal counsel, so in you know private counsel, and they normally at that point are done with it, but I think if it comes through the Human Rights Commission, they can at least track it, say it went to private or legal aid, and then maybe at the end try to find out what the disposition was. Uh, not, not so much the, the merits of it, but just what happened. Was it dismissed? Was it not found? I mean, just to know, because I can, I can picture in my head, and, and I don't even work in corrections, but you have no idea how many calls I get in letters from prisoners saying from native standpoint that they're not being treated fairly and, uh, and that's outside of mm -hmm. the right to me to help them because they're they're not accepting of the corrections and sometimes they try everything just because they have a lot of time on their hands and they're trying everything for somebody to help them do something <laughs> mm -hmm. and I, I have to bet those things you know myself but that's outside of any of these processes but I could take that and say hey this person's getting, uh, feels like he's being mistreated, report, say, go to the Human Rights Commission or talk to parole, and then I'll be an interested party. Um, but, I mean, at least there's a formal avenue uh, for them to, to do that. I mean, because somebody could get overwhelmed with all those complaints. I mean, you know, I mean, right? I mean, you could get complaints about everything all the time. Um, but, uh, I, uh, anyway. Mm -hmm. I think there has to be trackability to get data because otherwise we don't, it's hard to make, it's hard to make judgments on where to fix problems if we don't capture it. Like, is it all coming from housing? Is it all coming from the court system? Or, okay, 10% is going from coming from corrections, but 15% is coming from BSP and, you know, 80% is coming from housing. So then you would say to yourself, Maybe I better start educating HUD a little more or housing a little more because that might reduce the percentage of people complaining. So it gives you somewhere to focus your your outreach, right? And your marketing and your education. I mean, but if you don't have that data then Well, that's why we were we were talking yeah, about needing I mean, these documents for bit lack of a better word would be to try to get that data more yeah. under yeah. our belts so we would have a sense of how the complaint process would be influenced by, in fact, those data. Mm -hmm. Part of the problem with the data in 
this area is determining if a complaint may has any validity to it. I mean, that's mm -hmm. like what Major's saying. It goes off on a track where it's a lawsuit and it gets involved with lawyers and insurance. Mm -hmm. It's settlements. Uh, it's going to go. And you're not going to know to what right. extent there's right. validity to it. So when we're talking about data, we really have to define what we mean. What we Right. Yep. Because yep. Sheila was also concerned when we were talking about the permit facie case, and she was all upset about you know the well, people don't even understand what that means, <laughs> and then and then beyond that, that doesn't mean something didn't happen just because it doesn't rise to that standard. Mm -hmm. And she was trying to point out there. And I remember feeling a certain amount of resistance about that. And then I went home and thought about it. And I think the resistance was, I really just want there to be some sort of standard that makes this simple, or simple in scare quotes. Um, but yeah, what do you do when you have a situation where and I certainly know this happens, where somebody is just clearly got a racial bug and you, you know it, you know it the way you know how to tie your shoe in the morning and there is absolutely no way that you can actually prove that given the way the judicial system is set up. You just can't do it. And I know that's where, she, where Sheila was going with that. Um, that may or may not be something we can handle. I don't know. It, it, I would be sad if we can't, but it, I also understand that there are certain things that just can't get covered. Um, but I certainly know what she's talking about. I mean, I, I, I've had professors who, I just had a professor, I, I, someone I know, just told me, oh yeah, someone I had in graduate school who I could not get more than a D from. You may not know this, but in graduate school you do not get Ds. That's just not how life works. You don't even get Cs. You get As and Bs, and you get a B or a moron. And um, <laughs> so I, you know, I remember this guy just did not like me, and he, he couldn't stand it. So I was having dinner with this man the other night. He went, well, you know he's an open racist, don't you? It had never occurred to me that he really was. And he said, well, that's why. He's never given one of his black students anything more than a D. Well, I can't prove that. But in those cases, no, but. See, that's where the information, regardless of the outcomes, come. But if you if you have those interviews and you can capture that data somewhere, then doesn't mean at that point you can go back to the school and educate and say, let me pick a. You can do a student roster by the say the the who, what their race is, and you can prove that out. If they all have D's, then obviously there's a bias there that you can maybe address. But I'm just saying is doesn't matter about whether, like in this case, same with legal aid or legal, if it comes in HRC and you say, I put, farmed that out to legal, if 60% if are going to legal or private, then you know maybe I need to work on how to educate around that. Or it gives you some, you may not need to know if it was valid or not, but because every case is different. But you might be able to say, where do I focus the outreach and education because it's all going to legal or, or private or it's all going to HUD or it's all. I just think that capturing at least where the complaint's coming from, mm -hmm. where does it go, and then as much data as you can get that might document what that implicit bias may or may not have been just to give you some sense of mm -hmm. can I do anything further outside of this process right. for for education or looking into something. Right. In your example, there are some mechanisms that you could check just because they, there's records, data. Right. Right. <laughs> um, so, uh, I don't know. I, I don't want to be yeah. in death. I just want to focus no, us no, no. to I a point. I want to focus us to a point of where do we go from here 
to write something up for 6A, and I know we're not going to solve all the details today, but I'm saying is where. Well, but I think you, that? you guys had a really great idea here between the two of you, which is we need to get this to Karen and have her comment on it. That that would be a really useful thing would be to to get that to her and say this is this is where Don has started. This is where I'll our take thinking my name is. off. Just it's from the panel. Just to use it from the panel. Okay, I'll take. I your, mean, no. I'm just these are just suggestions. Yeah. Well, but okay. And but to put that forward to her and just to get some feedback and then and then come back with that. And then having the agencies report and now we and know having, that law enforcement agencies have to have a formalized process. Right. That was part of this as well. Yeah. Right. So we know those things are starting to come together in some way. So some of those recommendations are already being met. Exactly. I mean, you can frame it in such a way this I think this is an excellent summary of what she presented to us. I do too. At least this is the way the panel has perceived it, and right. does she agree that this accurately reflects Indeed. her comments, and we're using it as a first step in this process, and um, ask her for So I'll send, you want me to send you this? Since I, I would word? love it if you would and send it to me. Then you can tweak it and do whatever you want, and add maybe the data reporting, or some other reports, or some, something else, or... Sure. Um, I can just email it to you. If you, if yeah, you no, would, why, I would love You don't love need to that. retype it, I just send it to you. That would be lovely. Thank you. Okay. That was a lot. Anything else that we need to do right now? I would just make the point that I know that it's not part of the charge that we do this, but 6A says institute or how to institute a public complaint process to address perceived abuse of bias across all systems of state government. And we're talking about clearinghouse and having HRC kind of be the point of contact. Um, but one thing that I always worry about is that we all have different, our, our different entities have different ways of framing up what is a complaint and categorizing it. And so we've all done mm. a, a good job, let's say, of, okay, well, the SP has these, you know, types of codes of conduct and Corrections has their own system set up to receive a complaint and, and you, you're, you know, um, a complaint about discrimination based on race or ethnicity is called something different in your system than it is in ours, perhaps. And yeah. so how do we know, you know, I'm afraid that there isn't continuity from the different parts of the system, so we wouldn't necessarily know, what, you know, if it's a complaint in VSP, is it a complaint in, in other mm. entities in the system? How do we speak the same language or know that we are so that we're really able to track? If we were to internally, if we were to report, let's say there was like at the end of the year we reported Kate's Kate, um, allegations of racial profiling, um, allegations of, you know, you know, discrimination based on status, um, citizenship status, those types of things. So how, would, how do we all speak the same language or our systems speak the same language so we even know that we're tracking the same things or categories of things. Um, I, I think that having, when we hear from state agencies, that's gonna give us numbers or no numbers. Mm -hmm. So that's gonna send one path. And I think we get numbers, we can dig into that question with that. Okay, we see you have these numbers here. Then we can ask a question or someone asked a question. What is that? Can you give us a sort of broad base of what that looks like? Because mm -hmm. you know, I, I, my guess is I, I think we'll see probably little to no number somewhere because of no formalized process and nothing's been captured. So that's going to sort of trigger that. And then the agencies that do report, we kind of ask them, what does that what does that look like in your agency? And they can explain it to us. Yeah. I, I don't know. Does that well, you, I'm, yeah. I'm, As you say it, I'm just thinking how difficult this is. When yeah. I think about, yeah. for example, an inmate who may have been put in segregation and they file a grievance. Mm -hmm. The grievance is going to be categorized as an appeal of being in segregation, but if I'm reading it, if it's coming to me, and it says, I was put in segregation because mm -hmm. of my race, mm -hmm. it's not coming in under that heading. It would then be sent to somebody to investigate for that purpose, but unless you know, Monica, have we changed the headings enough, or no. are they that subtle to be able to capture that? 
I think we would capture it when we read it versus right. it being titled that way. Yeah, so I that think, is going to be difficult. I think what we're all talking about, I mean, and, and it's up to the panel to decide, I'm not officially a member, but it sounds like what you're asking is a lot of qualitative research that I'm not really sure the panel is you know, prepared or resourced to <laughs> yeah. conduct. And it, it seems to me like what you want to do is get a very sort of high level, what do we have, what do we know now, and just yep. kind of think about it at that point versus trying to work out in the comparison stuff because I think that would come kind of later on in a recommendation well, on what to do. I'm also thinking in my head too from an IT standpoint is that we use a lot of cross-reference tables when we deal with different entities where you have one standardized thing and then those agencies have to report based on your standardization. Mm -hmm. but, I, but I'm also thinking right now based on, based on HRC we're only talking 16 cases a year. Now that could expand dramatically, but I'm saying is we're talking about a very small number of, of data that each department, I don't know how many VSP gets from a racial standpoint, but they're saying two, they were saying what, a one to two? One to two. They were saying one to three. About one? profiling. How many? Yeah. I'm less than five. Right, so I'm saying is it may not be a task, an overwhelming task on each department that might say, I need to be able to put this in a standardized reporting format if you're talking about five people, or if you're talking maybe even 20, it might take somebody a week. I, I don't know what the big ramification is. Well, my question is, is, is this know. a decision to make now, or is this a decision to make or a act or a recommendation? Mm -hmm. But that needs to be worked yeah. out as later. part of the recommendation. Yeah, yeah later. Versus having, <laughs> having, let somebody else do the well, right. Well, I, yeah. I'm just sort of thinking about what the charge yeah. is and yeah. what yeah. the recommendation of the panel is, is how to institute a public complaint process. Right. And then the recommendation, you know, That's, sort of like how many you know, staff do we want? What right. are the other things that need to be worked out? It could all be part of the recommendation versus, I think it'd be really hard for this group to work all of that out. I don't yeah. think we can, and I think especially with the new systemic, I keep going to the systemic racial panel, they're charged with the same thing of collecting data. So mm -hmm. there has, there's gonna be an, an overwhelming uh, yeah. push right. to standardize all of the reporting. And they're gonna have a hard I, time Right, Collect so we can't do it before they, right. it'd be one of those things that collaborative, I think, it's gotta be collaborative. Once I mean, they start, they're gonna be a year behind us. So. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and 75,000 is gonna feel really little. So, so right, yeah. Yeah. right, we have no money, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna feel really right. You know, the other thought I had when I was listening to you was also, you know, that there isn't the standardization, and maybe, is that good? I mean, does that in fact reflect a certain kind of reality like that, that, do you know what I mean? I'm, that, it, that in fact there are different, the discrimination takes these different forms, mm -hmm. it's protean, and then uh, it, it, it can just become, it, it takes different forms, mm -hmm. it just, Amorphous in a way, it doesn't have a shape. You are going to be a good writer. Sorry. I can tell. I can tell. <laughs> but I, when somebody asked me to define something, I go, <laughs> <laughs> but, but, um, but that if that's in fact the case, then we're going to have that's going to be a problem to come up with what we're trying to come up with because, in fact, the fact that it has all these different manifestations is in fact racism itself. Mm -hmm. And so I just, I'm sort of suddenly going where you're going, which wasn't where I was going initially, and now I'm confused. Well, I mean, good confused. Very hard to, but, I don't think yes. you will be able to. Yeah. Um, every system has a different consequence yeah. for actions that discrimination police officer versus the judges. Of course. So I don't think you're going to find that common denominator other no. than bigger concept right. of this is racially motivated. The right. action or behavior is racially motivated, but right. as far as what happens once you're in that process, right. I think it will be different from it. Right. And I think you still need to capture, like you're saying, the perceived even if it's not reality, there's still a perception that they're being discriminated against racially when that may not even be the case. 
um, but at least right. the perception is their own reality of that, what, regardless of the outcome. So there's still that thing too: is were they really discriminated against, or was it perceived uh, because of their own? And really, that's a hard one. Well, it, yeah, because yeah. I mean, everybody, if they've always been discriminated against, everything to them is the discriminative factor. Uh, if they haven't, then they may say, well, maybe or no. Uh, I think it's experience. Well, what if you've yeah. been discriminated against and huh? you don't even know that you were, and so you don't make a complaint, and then it yeah. just goes un unlogged entirely? <laughs> You're just gonna. That is a problem. That's a problem. That is. <laughs> that we can't capture right. it. But, right, I, we, I can't. I mean, it's kind of like your, your um, what do I call him? Um, I've decided it's a him. Um, I don't know. <laughs> you, have a, you have a certain person who works in the middle of nowhere who is probably a horrible, horrible racist, but we won't know because there are no black people there. He never comes in contact. <laughs> <laughs> and how do we find this person? <laughs> and, and you and I were like, hmm. <laughs> this yeah. is a tough one. <laughs> and it may they be, could just be going unchecked all yeah, the time. Just, and I think that may be where this goes, too. I mean, and that then gets back to what you were saying, which is this is getting a little bit further than the panel can do. Right. It, it's just, I'm just listening and sort of making an observation yeah. and trying to, so that you don't get too far deep down into trying to solve problems that. Down the rabbit hole. I'm not sure you need to solve right now. Yeah. Okay. Keep us on track. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Perspective when you went well, there. I, huh? well, I stood up because my legs were going down to those chairs, but maybe it was helpful. <laughs> so I will, I will get this off to Karen Richards okay. with, um, with a bit of a, you know, little note attached as well, and saying we would like, as you were saying, is this accurate? A and B. This is a first step for us, and so we really do need to know some feedback from you on this um, as a way to start. And I will take Don Stevens off of it. Yeah. And um, but I really would like to say publicly thank you. This is wonderful. Yeah. I think oh, it is. It's okay. My apologies. Thought we were all working on it. We are, but it, it's just, but it, but it's yeah. really wonderful. No, but I just, no, thank you. But like um, I said, it's, come, yeah, make it come for the panel because I, don't I will, to... I will. Um, okay, it is seven thirty-five because, because it always is. Um, and well, I, yeah, I know it's always seven thirty-five somewhere. Uh, we were hoping to get to, again, Chief Don's submission on um, reducing racial disparity in the criminal justice system. You remember that document? <laughs> yeah, it's right here. I know, I've got it's it pretty here thick. too. Um, Actually, to, started to summarize it a little bit, but uh, I figured I stopped. Do you want to at least get a go on it? Because we've tabled this twice. We're in no hurry. We are in no hurry. That's true. I'm just asking. After following the story, I have given it enough attention. Well, I was going to also say that I haven't read it. And I'm okay. wondering if we can maybe, table. for next time, well, table it now, but also for next time, narrow yeah. the focus of what we want to look for in it. Okay. And I'm wondering, and if you have read it, so maybe you can give us some well. direction, Chief, but we are right now focusing on 6A and how to come up with a public complaint process. Right. So maybe if there is a spe section specific to that in the report, we could focus on trying to read that. Lovely. That. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have ideas. just a, I can give you just an outline that I had. I mean, it's nothing major, but I just started to work on something if you want. Um, it's just kind of, basically the, the good thing about this is that, because we were trying not to reinvent the wheel, I don't know if you would like that or I can work on something a little. This is just kind of a quick outline over it. Um, but the, the thing with that was that their, their main goal was is that things build upon other issues. So in other words, where do you root it out at each stop? Because like, say you get unfairly uh, arrested. 
well, if you're poor, you don't have money to pay for a lawyer to get you out. So then you're likely to not get bail because you can't post it. So now you're incarcerated. So now you run into other issues. So it just compounds on top of each other. So is how do you create um, areas to put checks and balances in each part of the process? Like arrest, um, court, corrections, parole. Like, where do you put checks and balances so it doesn't keep building on itself so you can recognize it? So, I mean, this is just a quick um, thing. I mean, th I just started working on it, so don't take this by any means as any gospel. It just kind of had an outline on the back of it to some of the different things, so you'd have to look at it to see if any of those fit. But mm -hmm. um, The book, I think I sent you guys all of the okay. yeah, yeah. book. So yeah. It's a pretty long and they, and they said we had the rights to copy it, so. 74 um, pages. Yeah, but it, you don't have, you can skim it. I mean, if it's something specific to 6A, I think it's got to, this has got to do with more of the training piece, or yeah. how do you put something in place for, to recognize that compounding bias that you may not even know that's happening, or whatever, but. Maybe a place to start. Mm -hmm. Impact them. Yeah. Focus in on those. So when we come back, we can start a discussion with various. Great. Yeah. Because there is probation and. Right. Well, and it breaks it out. And pre-trial. Yeah. There's prosecution. There's defense. There's judiciary. And then there's prison. Yep. So maybe that's Parse the way it we're out. looking at it. So. So we're not overwhelmed, all of us, with 74 pages. Oh, reading the same thing. Yeah. Share whatever. That's true. Everybody from. can report on their section. And then I would suggest. I don't have to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what happens when no, you come with handouts. I was right. right. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to, yeah, really. <laughs> I knew I should have shut up my mouth. Yeah, 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 that that was, yeah, that was a smart comment. So now you're right. Sorry. Uh, let's do that. Um, Sorry. What are we deciding? Read That's your own job. section okay. for the Got next it. time, if I understood correctly. Yes. Read the section most applicable. Okay. What happens if you have, like we do? We, say, there were seven we have three I sections, right? Scan <laughs> each of them. Right. Yeah. So, I did. Yeah, I did read them. But, yeah. I they're weighty. Them. I looked at them they too. They are we'll, uh, I should say. There's a yeah, lot there's in them to consider. Yeah. Dense. Maybe I kept going or back or and forth and going, which sounds kind of silly, but... You should all read section one now. Yes. Right? Did you already say that? Yes. No. Sorry. Okay. I was thinking yeah. that makes okay. sense. But and then and we were and we were narrowing our charge yeah. to six A, B, and C, right? So yeah. if anything that fits into both A, B, and C, great. Right. Make note of it. Yeah, make note of it. I think because okay. it might hit either one of those. I don't think we're doing anything more than A, B, and C, right? I think that's what we vote right on. now. Yeah. 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 yeah, sure. And they has pictures. <laughs> <laughs> I have, well, I, I like the idea when they said, let's not reinvent the wheel if we don't have to. I mean, if there's some good right. stuff in it. Right. And, the, and the, this is a national organization who deals with this. I mean, so they've got some experience. And they said they'd be willing to consult. I don't know what that would cost. But, I mean, I have, I have contact people That's right. if you want to talk to them, too. Um, Which is the sentencing project. It was interesting because I remember while I was reading it, just thinking, because it had so many, that there were questions in each section that should be asked. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. And my, I was just sort of going, of course, who would be asking this and how would they be remunerated? I think they break that down by the departments, I think, in the in the specific right. area. I viewed it as yeah. like a yeah. training document. Yeah. These are the questions you ask, when, perhaps even when you're hiring. When you're, right. when you're hiring. Uh, there, was, there was a lot to consider in that. Yeah. It really was. Yeah. So, in a good way. Yeah, yeah, no. I, I'm just trying to provide information. No, it's great. I don't think we really need to get more specific about it. I think we're all smart enough to know what relates to us. Yeah? yeah? Yes. Okay. Great. Um, 
So we'll do that for next time. Okay. We'll start okay. off with no, that for no, next no, time. Okay. okay. Um, well, scheduling of next meeting then. We are by statute to meet no more than 10 times a year. I believe. Is it no more than? I believe I that's what I read. I, I, I mean, that, but I, also I do get things wrong, <laughs> but wouldn't worry about it. Too much. Don't worry about it. I mean, okay, I'm not worried about it. Who's gonna get so next over. month? <laughs> David promises not to prosecute us. Yeah. I feel we better. Need. Okay. Is that because the, is that no some sanction. people are supposed to get? A stipends though compensated. At least people who are sure. appointed by the AG. I mean, I think yeah, I'll, I, we'll be fine. Okay. We'll be fine. If okay. you say so. I'd yeah. So the eleventh. I'm, I'm not being compensated, so you can use mine for someone else, extra for someone else. Sweet. All right. Eleven or twelve times. Well, get the weight of the AGs. <laughs> so the eleventh of September yes. is the second Tuesday of the month, which is what we do. Right. So I'm just putting that out now, the eleventh of September. I don't believe it's a holiday. Last time I said, there's no holiday on the 14th of August. And well, it's not a holiday, but holiday week. there is kind of an important <laughs> thing going on. And I managed to miss it. So anyway, I'm going to just sort of, so, I know. <laughs> six o'clock, right? So yeah. I'm like a little reluctant to sort of go, oh, the 11th of September. And uh, I mean, it has sadness, of yeah, course, yeah, but um, life does go on. And uh, where? It'll be here again. It'll be here? Yeah. Uh, oh. Ann Walker, our wonderful person who's been working on this stuff. She's lovely. She's great. Tell She's her amazing. thank you. I will. Thank you. Um, so she actually looked at all the possibilities for like three months out in June, and this was the only available spot for 6 to 8 p.m. This date, I mean, sorry, in September also. So Great. that's where we are. But she'll look again now for October, November, December. And okay. yeah, hope we'll try again unless there's an objection. It seems like people really like Waterbury. I don't know if that's actually a consensus, but. The Waterbury Library. The Waterbury yeah. Library. It was lovely. In any of the rooms. So we'll try for that as the first. I'd like a chef first priority. <laughs> from <laughs> Brattleboro. I will uh, check it out. Although I can predict. I'm from either way. It's a long drive for me either way. Well, for some reason, I think we Did you win? Did you win? Did you go there first? No. Okay, because it's on my calendar. Did you win the door right now? On the 11th? Yes. This is where I spent my whole few years. And apparently, they keep good tabs on you. They like track you down? Can you watch it? No, I just don't. So, okay. So, 6 to 8 p.m. on the 11th of September. You might find a way yes. when you're writing to um, yes. Karen. Yes. To suddenly ask, we understand you're leaving HRC. Yes. Would you be available to consult with us after the fact? And if not, she she's on our fair and impartial policing subcommittee. And she told us that she was retiring in October. Oh. She said you're welcome to stay on the committee. And she's very sensitive, making sure she doesn't step on the toes of her replacement. So I think that that's a subject that has to be very careful. Well, that's what I'm saying. We yeah. might as well. I didn't hear. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. She she not she wants to be careful. Just she doesn't step on the toes of her replacement. Got it. Okay. <laughs> so my point was, yes. she's not available. You need to get her in while she's now. still. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and if that's the case, we can always push this off again. I mean, if we had to, right? I mean. Right. I, I, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Given that she's... <laughs> well, and she may have an answer for your questions, too, by next week. Right. <laughs> it's a month away. Right. I will, I'll will. i put that together this week um, to her. Um, so, okay. So the 11th of September, 6 to 8 p.m., here in the Milne 
Milne no, this is Alvin. Oh, no, Milne. Yeah. Um, well, sorry. Milne Community Room. Where is that? Is that that's being publicized where again? That will go on the AG's website. Yes. And we'll put it on the library website also, even okay. though I'm not sure if anybody ever checks it, but we'll put it there. And the minutes will go up um, ASAP as soon as I take out that sentence that Major Jonas wants out. Oh. And I'll put that up, and I'll do that this week, too. Um, public commentary. Okay. Um, new business. Okay. Adjournment. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Pardon? I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Whoa. All in favor? Aye. All against? All abstaining. Okay, bye everybody. <laughs>